Good day, models. It is I, Pixie, here, and today I have figured out something interesting. There are notes on this map. Yeah, see all these notes? And also, we can zoom in, and it tells us the uh, longitude and latitude. Doesn't it? So we are roughly here. So we're gonna try and make our way down on the path goes when we're right. Trying to curve over to here, because apparently, according to these notes, 6672, I think it was. 6672. So watch out what's there. So that is what we are doing today. Actually, what about this? Is there something here? 5553 and the 5461 is close. Okay, so we'll check that out on the way there. What are these eyes here? Are those broken bridges or something? Bridges? Regular bridges are not broken. We'll figure it all out. I think here is where the path splits. We must continue down this way. Okay, so... We made a right. Went down this trail. How far down this trail did we go? Damn it! To stick to the right. This is where I have to go, or is this the dead end? If this is the dead end, that will show me a good idea of where I need to be. So if I'm, I could be there, or I could be further along. way for a bit, which is apparently north. Oh, there are the hoodoos. So there's there. So I must have made my way up to here. So I need to make my way back. Okay, yep. So I'm going that way. Yeah. I can read a map. Are you proud of me, Mom? I hope you're proud of me. But with all that aside, what was that uh, eye that I came across? Wait, no, the eye should be... Yeah, yeah, the eye was here. Somewhere. What's that mark? Huh. Maybe I will never know. Have I been here before? It seems familiar. Oh, we're here. So we are... Where are we? Oh, so we're at the radio station. We went north, we went north, we went north. We saw this. Did we somehow end up over here? I will pick up with you guys again when I figure that out. 
sounds like it sounds like a note. Soviet research unit for nat natural phenomenon regarding the occurrence of anomaly 0H91. Was that GH91? I can't quite read it. Uh, first instance took place in 1950 and 1953 in the area of Igarka by the construction of the Transpolar Main Line. The works were halted and the incidents classified. Any witnesses were ordered to be eliminated. Oh, just. Kill anyone who saw anything. Great. Always a good approach, I think. Uh, on December 17th, 1950, according to the witness evidence, at the same altitude as Camp 503 to the west of Igurka City, an em emanation of an unknown force and source occurred and caused instant death of 42 workers. The bodies evaporated and only shadows were left. Oh, as the witnesses testified. The incident was sudden and short. The next incident took place three years later, on March 14, 1953. Then, also in the above mentioned camp, a solidification event effect occurred. The bodies of 12 workers just froze. After autopsy, they were declared dead. The bodies still lying intact in Section 12 of the Severisk Research co Complex. Hmm. So. What was the first one we found? 5540. That shouldn't be too far away. Alright, so we have to go back past the church to find it. But we can get there. Bottles! Look what I found! We are sitting in room number 23. Although sitting might not be the right word because we are running around trying to finish up packing anything else we could need. Uh, food cans, tools, essentially whatever we get our hands on. We want to be sure that we took everything we could possibly need. We're running out of time. Damn it, where did I put my belt? I'm sure we forgot about something. We're almost ready. We lost the knife. We're counting the money. We're leaving the room in a complete mess. So, we made it to the train station. We're singing all the songs we know and making up new ones as well. Everyone is so excited. Finally, at around 3 a.m., we go to bed. I wonder, what is awaiting us when we get there? What will we see? How far will we make it? I hear the rest of the group breathing peacefully and it's snowing outside. That's nice. A lot better than the messy entries I've been getting. Oh, something's exploded. People are dead. They've frozen in place. I don't, that was a horrible one. I like that one. I did like that one. And also, I found another one written on that rock just over there. You have to go up on that uh, pillow there to see it. It is at 68.34. So let's track that one down. Thirty-four. Okay, so that should be all we should need to do to backtrack along here <coughs> and go south. Sorry about that. Who are you? Oh, uh, I'm Pixie. Say nothing. I just said Pixie. Let me in, and I'll see for myself. But I think so. Is this kind of calm? Is your refrigerator money? Yes. Better go catch it. Go milk your mother. That's my response to those kind of calls. They don't normally have a response to that. Okay, models. I was trying to get back to the thing. Back, uh... Down here, I think it was. 6834. Down there, but on my way, 
I've stumbled across this. 7 a.m. We're finally here. We met a group of Mansi people. They have weird tools. I think they're for hunting. We've also encountered local hospitality when we were not allowed to enter the railway station because we were singing too loud. But we received a very warm welcome from the local school. We had a bit of time, so we met with the students and told them about our expedition. When we reached another station, some drunk accused us of stealing his wallet. Police got involved, but luckily, after some explanations, the whole thing got sorted out. We spent the whole night in the train speaking about love, religion, politics. When we felt tired, we went to bed, but since the compartments were not closed, we decided to keep watch and switched every couple of hours. There are moments when I doubt whether we are ready for such an expedition. Disturbing thoughts are haunting me. Maybe we misjudged our capabilities. Others say we'll make it, but I'm afraid. I have a bad feeling about this. As if a shadow of fear was breathing down my neck. I cannot explain this. It's time to take a nap. All right. Just out of curiosity, where are we? We are there. In the middle of nowhere, apparently. At 6133. So if we head east, we'll come across that trail. This help me out, where are we? East should be, so that's north, that should be east. The trail should be more here. There we are. And I'll see you all when I get to the next uh, note. It's on a tree. The guard's confessions. 72 year old Anna N. After he gives a silence, decided to talk about events from her past. She told us, I'm terminally ill, I have nothing to lose. I want people to know what harm has been done to all of, uh, all of this in my name. In the name Science. Anna N. described the place, a science research center where scientists allegedly conducted inhuman experiments on prisoners. There was a special chamber they had never been allowed to even come close to. It was guarded by soldiers, although they did see people taken there. Not many came back. I kept in touch with one of them. I asked what had been done there and why so few came back up alive. He looked at me terrified. He said, And have you ever seen nothingness? A deep emptiness with the end. No end. I was there. I stood above the collapsed valley of the universe. On the border between reality and unreality. There's an abyss there. A gigantic well with no bottom. A dark cave of hell. I felt it. It was drilling into my head. Like a ticking clock. It looked at me from below. It was sneaking up on me and slowly started to enter me, the darkness. Sometime later, the same prisoner gave me a letter to pass on, in which he had begged for help. I was supposed to give it to the press and expose the whole thing, but the letter disappeared. Up until now, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, they would probably cover the whole thing up. We had to supervise the person to which NN was subject to for our comment. Waldemar Kronsky, the unit's commander, strongly denied such a took place and he also informed us a short message that NN was a guard but never worked in the mission uh, above center because an object like that simply does not exist. He's in NN's employer record as proof of the years 1940 to 1950. She worked in such a such an Dogaka She worked in a prison, also known as Special Object Number 110. She even let go from this facility due to mental illness, a copy of her health record, and medical certificate were attached. Okay, so they're kind of trying to cover all this up. Oh! Hello! Guys, I found another camp. It's up here, near the radio tower. I wish I knew that so I could have fast traveled to it earlier. we have just, just been a quick little walk from the radio tower. It's literally like 20 to 30 seconds away. Honestly, it's, uh, it's just up there. See? Look at how close that is. But we now have it. 
So I think what it's been saying in the loading screens is that we get fast travel from this camp to another camp. You click on the fire, the bed. Why is the bed? It should be in the tent. Yes, yeah, so we can fast travel if we need. Uh, we can't go to the, these locations, but to other campsites will be useful. We don't have to walk everywhere. So where were we heading again? I don't quite remember. I was checking out locations on the map, right. Uh, so, we're looking for one of the big ones. Uh, 6672, so we were on our way. 6672, there. We were on our way there. And also one here, I think. 5461. Yep, 5461. All right, let's go check those out. I found another one. Anomalies do not exist. Question mark? When almost 30 years ago, I wrote about a strange anomaly occurring in my city. As a reminder, I reported spatial distortions between buildings. I thought I was nuts. Since then, mankind has been witnessed thousands of strange, mysterious, and unexplained events and phenomena around the world. A lot was documented and supported with hard evidence. Unfortunately, to this day, prominent scientists seem not to notice or simply underestimate these, this issue. We have asked Dr. Jarvis Norham, Northam, 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 uh, from the American University of Technology and Life Sciences. Anomalies appearing practically around the globe is an undeniable fact. We know that at least several dozen of such events have taken place in Russia and the United States. What we do also have uh, may receive reports of strange, extraordinary, and sometimes dangerous phenomena. Authorities must stop avoiding this issue because every year we regularly we register an increase in these so-called anomalies uh, occurring. I do not know what causes them, but frequently the uh, repercussions are, are tragic. And to that, the help helpless attempts to cover up these events by the governments of particular countries uh, that are just becoming more and more public, pathetic. So in 1998, Kremlin officially de denied that the special natural Special National Phenomena Research Unit established in the 50s was to deal with the anomalies in any way. Okay. Um. These all just lit on fire for no reason. I'm a little bit afraid. We should be on this path here. Uh, I couldn't take the bridge because it was out. What's going on with the clouds? How much time is passing right now? Days? Weeks? Months? Now it's probably hours just when I speed the clouds. Okay, sacrificial altar. Strange lights in the distance. Human being's mind is a curious toy, consumed by pain and madness. It resists, but defends itself from what can set it free. The path to understanding leads through contradiction. We deny one simple fact, the fact that humans are the real monsters. And as such, we should treat each other. Although, I had been deluding myself otherwise for so many years. I have finally figured out my true nature. Remember that in the darkness, you are never alone. There is always someone who awaits your fall. Okay, that's terrifying. Let's leave here. Uh, the torches are going out. But the clouds are still moving at an alarming rate. I wonder if like a weather institute or something picked up on that, or was it just me all along? If I move back towards it, will they pick up? No, they don't seem to. 
There's another one on this totem here. Why is Captain Sad with tree with a knife? Dr. Grigor Antwonsk's testimony on anomaly 0H91. We had never seen such a thing. The activity, the activity was off the scale. Energy readings. It was just beyond any reason. I remember Dr. Pitnik said he had heard singing. He saw angels appearing from the light. It was clear to us that it was dangerous to stay too close to the anomaly for too long. But we had to conduct more tests. Therefore, we decided to use the prisoners. That is why we created Science S Section 22. Oh! I see then. I'm trying to make my way towards that light. I keep being stuck on these trees. And I know that there are anomalies here. I've seen one. So here's a, a very makeshift tent. Maybe a hunter's tent? Oh, but that is not a tent. That is definitely more advanced than a tent. Just need to get up there. Oh, I don't like these noises. There is something around me, and I don't like it. The, th the thing that I find most disturbing about <laughs> oh. What was that? Do you not like my flashlight? Yeah, stay away if you don't like my flashlight. Oh no, he's not deterred by my flashlight. Oh no, 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 no. He's right behind me. 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 Should right I look behind me? I don't want to look behind me. I'm going to keep running this way. Oh, I got tired now. Oh, I'm going to risk a look behind me. Okay, I don't see anything, but that's not very reassuring. Um, I will try to find a note, mortals, but I've gotten a bit lost. I'm not entirely sure where I am. Okay, guys. The paper is around here somewhere. I can hear it. Ah, right here. We slept in something you could call a hotel. Two persons per bed. We woke up at 9am. It was actually quite comfortable, although it was a little cold because we forgot to close the window vent. We ate breakfast, packed our things, and at 11am we were ready to go. We set off in the back of a truck, so it was a bit cold. During the ride, we talked about absolutely everything we could think of. On the spot, we spoke with some local workers. I remembered one in particular. He had a red beard. Friends called him Beardman. We cooked and ate dinner, and now we are resting. Half of the group is looking at some maps. The rest are sleeping. I started handling the equipment and writing. It is still a bit too cold. My hands are shaking, but finally, my thoughts are much brighter than yesterday. No creepiness in them whatsoever. There's a long way ahead of us, but the only thing I can feel is excitement. It seems as if the forest is calling us. That beautiful, magical, dark forest. Okay. The forest is calling them. That's a bit of an ominous sign. But of course, they didn't really know what they were getting into. They just thought, ooh, excited. Good expedition. And there is where I think we're going to leave off. Where the hell is that anomaly? That sound normally means that there's an anomaly nearby. Okay, I think we're clear for the moment. But until next time, mortals, good night. And look out for the anomalies. They show up everywhere around here. <laughs>